So the Winnipeg Police Service continues to ask the public for their help with identifying a teenage or young adult male that was found in medical distress. On August 5th, 2022, at approximately 1.25 a.m., emergency services responded to a McDonald's restaurant at 1186 Main Street to check the well-being of a male whose behavior raised concerns of a passerby. He was subsequently transported to a hospital in critical condition. On September 6th, so nine days ago, we issued a media release with images of this male in hopes of identifying him. However, he remained uh, unidentified and still remains unidentified. At the time, and this is still current, he's described as a, a male in his late teens or early 20s with a thin build and with short black hair. And we've attached images, uh, surveillance images, um, to the release. And I'm sure they'll be available uh, wherever you consume news as well. That previous media release was intended to notify or to identify the male and notify his family. However, it was unsuccessful. As a result, we are now advising that the male has passed away and are providing additional details about the incident. His death is not believed to be the result of foul play, but the Major Crimes Unit is investigating the matter with the support of the Chief Medical Examiner's Office. The investigation so far has revealed uh, a number of details, including the following. On August 5th at uh, 1234, so this is about just under an hour before he was found uh, by a passerby or uh, by our, our officers, uh, sorry, emergency services responded. At 1234 a.m., the male board, boarded a Winnipeg Transit bus in the area of McPhillip Street and Mountain Avenue. He rode the bus, which was route, route 15, for about 10 minutes before he disembarked at Main Street and Mountain. There's a McDonald's right there that he walked to. This is the McDonald's at 1168 Main Street. He remained in that area right by next to the McDonald's until approximately 122 when we received a call from an individual concerned about his well-being. Our officers, along with the Winnipeg Fire Paramedic Service, arrived soon after, located the male, and administered emergency medical care before he was transported to a hospital. The male did not have any personal belongings, but he had been wearing black pants, and had a pair of size 11 US Nike Air Jordan shoes that are colored black predominantly, but have red and purple accents. Again, we're providing pictures of those shoes. Those are the shoes that he had been wearing. Um, they'll again be attached to our release on our social media pages and have been sent to the media as well. The male is six feet tall and weighed 160 pounds at the time of his death with no tattoos or piercings. In addition, his teeth have no distinctive features with none missing, so he had all his teeth. And it was also very possible that the male was visiting from outside the Winnipeg area. Detectives have attempted to identify the deceased through numerous investigative avenues, including fingerprinting, missing person reports, as well as sharing information with community-based groups, law enforcement agencies, but have been unsuccessful. Anyone with information about this male is asked to call the Major Crimes Unit at 204-986-6219. Um, just before I begin to take questions, I just want to talk a bit about our strategy in regards to this incident. So nine days ago when we released this information, um, we knew that the male was deceased, but we made a decision out of respect for the family in hopes of being the ones to be able to sit down and talk to them and notify them that their loved one had passed away. So we withheld that information at the time. Um, the release was purposely a little obscure on details, um, just so we could save it for the notification to the family but unfortunately we haven't been able to identify his family or the male himself. So we're taking a different approach today. Um, we wanna be much more forthcoming with the investigation. Um, ultimately this occurred over a month ago. I know that the, the medical examiner's office um, is anxious to identify this person as well for a number of reasons, as are we. So um, I'm here today to talk about the investigation. I can answer any questions in, uh, in depth about how we got to this point and hopefully just provide bits of information that may help somebody in the public remember maybe dealing with this individual that night um, or anyone that can help us identify him. We also ask members of the public to share this with people that may live out of town. The, reality that we issued this media release um, nine days ago. Uh, we ended up getting two possible calls or calls about two possible people but ruled them out very quickly. That leads us to believe that there's a likelihood that this male doesn't reside in Winnipeg or was visiting. So again we ask um, if you have family or friends that live out of town please share this with them as well. So. Um, when did he die? Was that 
on August 5th or? Two days later in hospital. On the 7th? Yeah, that's correct. Um, and I'm not sure how much you will say, but I mean, <coughs> how did he die? Was it the medical expense, I'm assuming? Yeah, and we struggled with this about how much in depth we want to get into the circumstances specifically that led to his death. We've made the decision that we're only going to acknowledge this as a medical incident right now. Um, we don't believe there was any foul play, uh, certainly no signs of an assault on him. Uh, we're not investigating this as a criminal matter. Um, the male was acting, um, and again I want to be very careful with my words here, um, in a behavior that raised the concern of a passerby and, and likely would have raised the concern of anyone that, that had encountered him uh, when he was in the area of that McDonald's. I mean, is, is that like a rat behavior? I, mean, what is I think that would be a fair description. So it's a complete mystery? No idea who was driving? It is. Typically when we come across somebody in a situation like this, uh, fingerprints typically are probably the most common way that we identify. Um, the fact that his fingerprints aren't on not only our local database but a national one as well would indicate that this pro person probably isn't known to any police agency across Canada. Um, and that's another important element here. Uh, we've had individuals who have called um, as a result of the last release um, asking if it was their loved one. Uh, but the reality is if your loved one has been fingerprinted by the police, there's a strong likelihood that this person isn't who it is. So um, we do not believe that this person is known to police and that might help uh, some individuals as well. Um, so once we exhaust uh, fingerprinting in cases like this, we tend to move to other, um, other methods. Um, missing person reports, often within a day or two or a few weeks later, um, the family will come forward or friends with concerns and we'll be able to, uh, to tie up the two incidents that way. Um, unfortunately, that hasn't happened in this case. We don't believe it has. Uh, we've also disseminated uh, pictures of this mail and, and details about the incident to groups uh, such as CFS. Um, I know that officers have very, visited various shelters here in Winnipeg with that information, and I believe information has been provided to groups such as Bear Clan as well. Uh, again, attempts that we made prior to going to the public. So, I mean, was, was he incapacitated or, or incoherent when? emergency responders came to him? Um, yeah, and I can get into a bit more detail. Um, so the call was placed that he was acting, uh, again, with behavior that concerned the passerby. They called 911. It was enough to um, result in that immediate call. By the time officers and WFPS arrived, and I believe it was just minutes later, he was unresponsive. So our officers have not had a chance, did not have a chance to, um, to communicate with this male prior to his passing. So, and then with the McDonald's, was he did he go inside the restaurant or he was outside? I, I don't believe he went in. I think at that hour the restaurant is closed. Um, there's certainly a time gap as you'll notice if you follow the timeline. He arrives at the McDonald's. Um, he gets off the bus at about 12.44 a.m. And then um, the first call to police, and I think it might be the only call before we get there, is at 1.22. So um, I guess that'd be about a half an hour um, time discrepancy there. Um, we have surveillance in, or surveillance video that suggests that he just wandered around the restaurant. Um, I know he was sitting at times. We also know that he likely encountered um, a number of individuals. Um, at one point he encountered two people together. We don't know if there was dialogue uh, between those groups. It certainly looks like there was some type of interaction, not physical. Um, and then later on he at least came across another person. So. Not only the, the reason for this release is not only to identify the male, that's ultimately our goal, uh, but in hopes of maybe soliciting information from anyone that may have encountered uh, this person. I think you can also draw from the pictures a uh, conclusion that he was shirtless at the time too, which, which may help jog some individuals' memories. So, um, the police have talked to community based groups and law enforcement as well. I mean, is that out of the province as well? I mean, yeah, I don't believe we've explored that avenue. Um, I mean, certainly fingerprints, we felt, um, if he was from out of province, may help us in this, in this investigation. Unfortunately, they haven't. Um, at, at this point, we've, we've communicated with, um, again, community-based partners, RCMP, another agency that we've provided information to. They're, they have and are in the process of fanning out this information to their agencies across Manitoba. Um, and again, if, if we continue to have no luck, then we look at maybe expanding that potentially to, to areas outside the province. So um, we're hoping that 
attention to this through to the traditional media and social media should also be able to take it just outside our province as well. I mean, why is it important for police and the medical examiner to, to identify this, this I, I'm glad you asked that. I think, I know one of the, the I'm just trying to think how to word this, this one of our priorities when it comes to any type of release where there's a de deceased individual or any type of matter where there's a deceased individual is notifying next to kin. It's probably the number one reason why some of our releases are delayed and one of the biggest consideration when we release on an individual who has passed away. We always want to make sure that those loved ones can find out about this um, maybe in, in a more um, I guess non-public way. Unfortunately, we've we've tried that um, that strategy in this this case. It hasn't worked. But I think being able to tell his loved ones what happened to him, um, he's probably missed in some fashion. Um, so it's important to us to, to have them notified. There's also the reality is that the medical examiner's office has somebody who's un unidentified, essentially a John Doe. Um, there is a point where, where that person will likely have to be buried. Um, that, that point is coming up in the near future. Um, again, I, I don't know if I like the wording last ditch effort, but this is essentially what this is. Um, we want to ask the public um, to take this seriously. Please share this information. It, it's incredibly important to us that this male get identified and the loved ones be notified um, so that they can take part in a, in a proper burial. So. I don't know if I've seen <clears throat> anything like this in the couple years that I've been doing this. How many John Does do the Chief Medical Examiner's Office deal with and how often do you guys uh, as police get involved? Yeah, that, that might be a question for them in terms of how, many, how, much, how often they deal with, but uh, I was talking to the medical examiner that's assigned to the file today and, and she says it's um, it's something they never want to deal with. I think just like a police officer in pursuit of investigation wanting charges, they always want to identify that individual and just be able to provide some closure to the family. So I know it's incredibly important to them. It's incredibly important to us. Uh, we have a lead investigator in our major crimes unit. I talked to her last night and I know that it's important to her that this may be identified. This isn't something you just want to leave um, as a task. It's a priority for us. It's a priority for her. Um, so again, we're, we're really hoping that the public can help us out with this investigation. Um, we'll continue to work, um, make the investigative efforts we have. Other things that we've done is uh, we've canvassed the area where he had been found uh, with no luck. We've used video surveillance, which is how we were able to track him back to a bus. Um, and ultimately determined that he got on the bus in the area of um, Mountain and McPhillips. And that's important too, uh, an important detail of this investigation. Um, so he, he boarded that Winnipeg Transit bus in the area of McPhillips and Mountain. So there's a, I guess there's a likelihood that he may have been staying in that area, uh, whether it's with friends, family, or there's still the possibility that he resided in the area. But something brought him to that area prior to getting on that bus. Is there a chance he was homeless? I'm glad you asked that as well. Um, when I was talking to the medical examiner this morning, they pointed out that uh, he didn't have any significant injuries on him, but he had some superficial cuts, bruises, uh, nothing that would suggest a recent assault. Um, and I think just the totality of the circumstances, we've agreed that there's a likelihood that he may be a transient individual. And that might also contribute to some of the difficulties that we've had in terms of identifying him. So um, we're hoping that this can be shared widely. Um, somebody will recognize this individual. Um, hopefully it's just a matter of time, something that happens in the near future. Um, but somebody out there knows who this person is and we would certainly encourage you to contact us as soon as you can. So. It is an unusual incident. Um, I don't, I've been in the public information office for six years. I've never had a case like this. Um, I've been on the job for 15 years and, and I really can't think of this. Typically, I mean, it's, it's been a month and 10 days. At, at some point, something comes through that helps us identify uh, the individual, whether it's a missing persons report or uh, the work of our officers. Um, but we've exhausted almost every investigative avenue that we have available to us. Um, and now we've come back to the public a second time. Typically, we wouldn't share this level of information, um, but we're hoping that it helps, um, and, and ultimately that's our goal. So another thing to pay attention to is the shoes. They are distinct. Um, again, they're size 11 Nike Air Jordan shoes. Um, if you can't see a picture of them, they're black with purple and red um, 
accents to them. Um, and in terms of him, again, I'll just go over some details specific to him. Um, at the post-mortem examination, he was, uh, he was um, measured as six feet tall, uh, six feet exactly, 183 centimeters. He was weighing 160 pounds. And again, he has no tattoos or piercings uh, that we could see uh, or that we identified. And his teeth are all there. There's no distinctive features there. And, and I guess speaking on tattoos, that's another way that we tend to identify people that might not have fingerprints with us. So, but yeah, I, I don't know if there's any other questions. And again, I just a plea to the public: um, if you have any interest in this matter, and I hope you do, because this is somebody's loved one out there, uh, please share this widely. Um, hopefully, we can identify this person and, and give the proper closure to the family. So, I guess there's always somebody who might know who this guy is, right? Even if he doesn't have family. Absolutely, and even if it's just an inkling, um, or you, I think if you look at that picture and your gut tells you you know who this is, please contact our detectives. Um, again, it's the Major Crimes Unit that's investigating this, 204-986-6219. Um, and that also kind of segues into another thing I wanted to mention. I, I don't have our missing persons unit and our forensic identification section listed in this release, uh, but they're two units that have helped immensely. Our missing persons unit have um, done a number of investigative steps in this. Um, every day they're looking at new reports that are coming in, old existing reports to try to identify who this person is. Our forensic identification section has left no stone unturned when it comes to trying to identify this male. Not only did they just take one or two fingerprints, they took numerous fingerprints and, and again that was an attempt um, just to rule out completely with certainty that he can't be identified through fingerprinting so all right any other questions thank you very much